Good evening. I'm Joy Harjo, and I want to welcome you to Gather in Poems, a special reading presentation by the Academy of American Poets. Founded in 1934, today the Academy and its website poets.org bring poetry to millions of readers around the world each year. At a time when we must continue to be apart due to COVID-19, we know that sharing poems with one another can provide a sense of togetherness. This evening, we are pleased to present 16 poets offering readings of favorite works. Thank you so much for gathering with us in poetry. Tonight, I'd like to share a poem by my daughter, Rainy Dawn Ortiz, written in response to a CNN exit poll during the election that um, named Native voters as something else. More Than Something Else by Rainy Dawn Ortiz. Something else, someone else, somewhere else. That place is here in my home. We are here. I am brown, brown hair, brown eyes, like cookies, Feather tells me. And I like to think it's perfectly cooked Pueblo cookies. My kids are something else, nine different shades of brown, all beautiful. My grandkids are something else, four brown eyes, two blue eyes, all native, definitely something else. As I watch them be rowdy, be loving, be here in this world, we are here on this earth, in this time and place, in our homes, on our lands, in the cities, with our families laughing loudly, cooking together, protecting each other. We are something else with our songs, our dances. We pray with cornmeal, eagle feathers, medicine bundles, burn some sage, make sure to acknowledge the four directions as the sun comes up. We are the something else who were here to greet Christopher Columbus. We were born from this earth, crawled out from the center of our mother's womb. We are important. We are strong. We are something else. We are Pueblo people, plains people, forest people, desert people, nomadic people, cliff dwellers, ocean fishers, Lake and river fishers, hunters, medicine collectors, horse riders, artists, speakers, lawyers, doctors, teachers. We are human beings. We are something else. We are native people, indigenous to this land. We are a proud something else. Thank you, Rainy. I'm Amy Nazuka Matateo, and I'm going to read a poem by Mina Alexander called Darling Coffee. The periodic pleasure of small happenings is upon us. At the farmer's market, snow glinting in heaps, a cardinal its chest puffed out, bloodshod above the piles of awnings, passion's proclivities, you picking up a sweet potato, turning to me, this too? Query of tenderness under the blown red wing. Remember the brazen world? Let's find a room with windows onto elms, strung with sunlight, a cafe with polished cups. Darling coffee, they call it. May our bed be stoked with fresh cut rosemary and glinting thyme, all herbs in due season tucked under wild sheets fit for the conjugation of joy. I'm Rafael Campo. This poem is by Lucille Clifton. Won't you celebrate with me? Won't you celebrate with me what I have shaped into a kind of life I had no model. Born in Babylon, both non-white and woman, what did I see to be except myself? I made it up, 
Here on this bridge between starshine and clay, my one hand holding tight my other hand. Come celebrate with me that every day something has tried to kill me and has failed. Hi, my name is Araceli Skirmai, and I'm so happy to be sharing with you today a poem by Fatima Asghar called If They Come For Us. In it, she sings toward her kin the details of moments shared with strangers who are also family. Many of these details are not the markings and histories of my own cultures, and in that way, I bear witness to a love I stand outside of. This love, is so big, I am also shiny with it. And another thing, I do know what it means for our names to be, as she writes, this country's wood for the fire, and some of what it takes to survive the customs and policies of a country that does not love us. And that some of that survival has to do with what we find in art and how we ourselves are sensed in a poem, be that this one or another the sound of somebody's voice, somebody who loves us saying our names. If they come for us, Fatima Oscar. These are my people and I find them on the street and shadow through any wild, all wild. My people, my people, a dance of strangers in my blood. The old woman's sari dissolving to wind. Bindi a new moon on her forehead. I claim her my kin, and so the star of her to my breast. The toddler dangling from stroller hair, a fountain of dandelion seed. At the bakery, I claim them too. The Sikh uncle at the airport who apologizes for the pat down. The Muslim man who abandons his car at the traffic light drops to his knees at the call of the Asan. And the Muslim man who drinks good whiskey at the start of Maghrib. The lone Kala at the park pairing her kurta with Crocs. My people, my people, I can't be lost when I see you. My compass is brown and gold and blood. My compass, a Muslim teenager, snap back and high tops gracing the subway platform. Mashallah, I claim them all. My country is made in my people's image. If they come for you, they come for me too. In the dead of winter, a flock of aunties step out on the sand, their dupatas turn to ocean, a colony of uncles grind their palms, and a thousand jasmines bell the air. My people, I follow you like constellations. We hear glass smashing the street, and the night's opening dark. Our names, this country's wood for the fire. My people, my people, the long years we've survived, the long years yet to come. I see you map my sky, the light, your lantern long ahead, and I follow, I follow. My name is Arthur Z, and I'm going to read Streets by Naomi Shihab Nye. Streets. A man leaves the world and the streets he lived on grow a little shorter. One more window dark in this city. The figs on his branches will soften for birds. If we stand quietly enough evenings, there grows a whole company of us, standing quietly together. Overhead, loud grackles are claiming their trees, and the sky which sows and sows, tirelessly sowing, drops her purple hem. Each thing in its time, in its place. It would be nice to think the same about people, 
Some people do. They sleep completely, waking refreshed. Others live in two worlds, the lost and remembered. They sleep twice, once for the one who is gone, once for themselves. They dream thickly, dream double. They wake from a dream into another one. They walk the short streets, calling out names, and then they answer. My name is Patricia Smith. This poem is Two Prisoners by Gwendolyn Brooks. I call for you cultivation of strength in the dark. Dark gardening in the vertigo cold, in the hot paralysis, under the wolves and coyotes of particular silences where it is dry where it is dry. I call for you cultivation of victory over the long blows that you want to give and blows you're going to get over what wants to crumble you down to sicken you. I call for you cultivation of strength to heal and enhance in the non-cheering dark, in the many, many mornings after, in the chalk and chalk. I'm Ethan Wong, the 2020 National Student Poet for the Southwest Region, and I'll be reading So They Say, they finally nailed the proton size and hope dies by Rosebud Ben Oni. But love does not, Manel Sebastian, of all the afflictions and luck, all the sums and paradoxes and gravitons that add up to more minus than plus. I promise that love is often as inconsiderate as it is just, because actual love, I imagine, is a wave function that isn't restricted to being in any one place at one time. No. Love must be a superposition with a measurement problem. But don't worry. I won't get into alternative realities and how a single judgment from one can so easily dissolve whom or what she's sizing up. And yet, when experts speak of capturing vastness at such a small scale, I can only see the passenger pigeon flitting into living sequoia trees and every blue whale sinking into the great barrier reef. And all the threats each are facing, all these gigantic things that beat within the size of a subatomic being that is the proton, which is not fundamental as love ought to be. And maybe it does all add up to a single hush, like how we try to escape what makes us human by trying to make sense of what made us human. These days, when I think on the proton, I only observe love as entanglement, in which we bias and sway and touch over great, great distances. But like I said, I won't get into it. Like the court's fate, and all the possible quantum trickery out there lying in wait. I don't believe hope dies just because old measurements got it wrong, and there are no secret lives between protons and muons that cause the former to change in size, silencing all the music that drives us toward mystery rather than discovery. Maybe just think electronic hydrogen, since for now, there's an answer, even if it feels like a dead end. Because I bet everything that at least something began over this. Jounce, butterfly, and cower over and ever 
greedy, hunger, and sour. Until aching each other's spoils, stripping bare their delicate and deadly creaking coils. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jessica Jacobs. Hi, I'm Nicole Brown. And we're grateful to be here as part of the community for Gather in Poems. And uh, I'm going to begin with a poem by Matthew Olsman, Astronomers Locate a New Planet. And when I was looking through the archives of poets.org, which is just incredible, um, I, was, I was struck by this line. There was a time when it would have been illegal for my wife to be my wife. Uh, for Matthew and his wife, the poet Vivi Francis, this is true um, because of their different races. Um, but it also made me think of, of our marriage and the fact that it wasn't even recognized in the state in which we lived when we were married. Mm -hmm. um, and I just, I love how beautifully this poem speaks to this time in which so many people are lonely and isolated and just longing to touch and be touched by another person. And yet there are still people who feel like it's their right to deny such intimacy. Um, so yeah, I'm just, I'm very grateful to have this poem. It begins with an epigraph from Reuters in 2011. Because it is so dense, scientists calculate the carbon must be crystalline. So a large part of the strange world will effectively be diamond. Mm -hmm. Astronomers locate a new planet by Matthew Olsman. Like the universe's largest engagement ring, it twirls and sparkles its way through infinity. The citizens of the new world know about luxury. They can live for a thousand years. Their hearts are little clocks with silver pendulums pulsing inside. Eyes like onyx, teeth like pearl. But it's not always easy. They know hunger. They starve. A field made of diamond is impossible to plow. Shovels crumble and fold like paper animals. So frequent is famine that when two people get married, one gives the other a locket filled with dirt. That's the rare thing, the treasured thing, there. It takes decades to save for, but the ground beneath them glows and people find a way. On earth, when my wife is sleeping, I like to look out at the sky. I like to watch TV shows about supernovas and contemplate things that are endless, like the heavens and maybe love. I can drink coffee and eat apples whenever I want. Things grow everywhere, and so much is possible. But on the news tonight, a debate about who can love each other forever and who cannot. There was a time when it would have been illegal for my wife to be my wife, her skin, my household of privilege. Sometimes I wish I could move to another planet. Sometimes I wonder what worlds are out there. I turn off the TV because the news rarely makes the right decision on its own. But even as the room goes blacker than the gaps between galaxies, I can hear the echoes. Who is allowed to hold the ones they wish to hold? Who can reach into the night? Who can press his or her own ear against another's chest and listen to a heartbeat telling stories in the dark? Oh, that's so good. <laughs> that's so good. Um, so now, of course, is a time when so many of our rooms, uh, once filled with family and friends, especially now for the holidays, um, those rooms are empty, either because we're too afraid to gather together, and rightly so, or worse, because some of us are no longer here. For that, I'd like to share a poem by Belgian-American poet Laurent Beausselard. Laurent was once married to a poet 
um, by the name of Kurt Brown that we sadly lost in 2013. The poem is ghosted by memory, um, but it's so mm. full of tenderness and joy. And I think those two things are so worth remembering, especially now. This is called Rooms Remembered by Laurent Beausoleil. Rooms Remembered. I needed for months after he died to remember our rooms. Some lit by the trivial, others ample with an obscurity that comforted us. It hid our own darkness. So for months, duteous, I remembered. Rooms where friends lingered, rooms with our beds, with our books, rooms with curtains I sewed from bright cottons. I remembered tables of laughter, a chipped bowl in early light, black branches by a window bowing toward night, and those rooms, too, in which we came together to, to be away from all. And sometimes from ourselves. I remember that also. But tonight, as I stand in the doorway to his room and stare at dusk settled there, what I remember best is how to throw my arms around his neck, I needed to stand on the tip of my toes. Matthews and this is my daughter. Hi, I'm Willa Matthews. Welcome to our home. Join us as we gather in poems. Today I'll be reading For My People by Margaret Walker. For my people everywhere singing their slave songs repeatedly, their dirges and their ditties and their blues and jubilees, praying their prayers nightly to an unknown God, bending their knees humbly to an unseen power. For my people lending their strength to the years, the gone years and the now years and the maybe years, washing, ironing, cooking, scrubbing, sewing, mending, hoeing, plowing, digging, planting, pruning, hatching, dragging along, never gaining, never reaping, never knowing and never understanding. For my playmates in the clay and dust and sand of Alabama backyards, playing, baptizing and preaching and doctor and jail and soldier and school and mama and cooking and playhouse and concert and store and hair and Miss Chumbi and company. For the cramped, bewildered years we went to school to learn to know the reasons why and the answers to and the people who and the places where and the days when, in memory of the bitter hours when we discovered we were black and poor and small and different, and nobody cared, and nobody wondered, and nobody understood. For the boys and girls who grew in spite of these things to be man and woman, to laugh and dance and sing and play and drink their wine and religion and success, to marry their playmates and bear children and then die of consumption and anemia and lynching. For my people thronging 47th Street in Chicago and Lenox Avenue in New York and Rampart Street in New Orleans, lost, disinherited, dispossessed, and happy people 
filling the cabarets and taverns and other people's pockets and needing bread and shoes and milk and land and money and something, something all our own. For my people, walking blindly, spreading joy, losing time, being lazy, sleeping when hungry, shouting when burdened, drinking when hopeless, tied and shackled and tangled among ourselves by the unseen creatures who tower over us omnisciently and laugh. For my people blundering and groping and floundering in the dark of churches and schools and clubs and societies, associations and councils and committees and conventions, distressed and disturbed and deceived and devoured by money-hungry, glory-craving leeches, preyed on by facile force of state and fad and novelty, by false prophet and holy believer. For my people standing, staring, trying to fashion a better way from confusion, from hypocrisy and misunderstanding, trying to fashion a world that will hold all the people, all the faces, all the Adams and Eves and their countless generations. Let a new earth rise. Let another world be born. Let a bloody peace be written in the sky. Let a second generation full of courage issue forth. Let a people loving freedom come to growth. Let a beauty full of healing and a strength of final clenching be the pulsing in our spirits and our blood. Let the martial songs be written. Let the dirges disappear. Let a race of men now, rise and take control. I'm going to read a poem by Langston Hughes called My People. Dream singers, storytellers, dancers, Loud laughers in the hands of fate, my people. Dishwashers, elevator boys, ladies' maids, crap shooters, cooks, waiters, jazzers, nurses of babies, loaders of ships, porters, hairdressers, comedians in vaudeville, and bandmen in circuses, dream singers all, storytellers all. Dancers, God, what dancers? Singers, God, what singers? Singers and dancers, dancers and laughers. Laughers? Yes, laughers, laughers, laughers. Loud-mouthed laughers in the hands of fate. Hi, I'm Bob Hass. The assignment is to read a poem uh, that speaks to human community or, or a moment of intimacy or contact between people. And my mind went straight to a poem I love by George Oppen, which is called Sarah in Her Father's Arms. Cell by cell, the baby made herself. The cells made cells. That is to say, the baby is made largely of milk. Lying in her father's arms, the little seed eyes moving, trying to see, smiling for us to see. She will make a household to her need of these rooms. Sarah, little seed, little violent, diligent seed. Come, let us look at the world glittering this seed will speak, Max, words. There will be no other words in the world but those our children speak. What will she make of a world, do you suppose, Max, of which she is made? I'm Dr. Seema Yasmin. I'm reading From the Voice of Sheila Chandra by Ghazim Ali. Long before she lost it drift, S unanchored wanted to merge, and the body of the singer become the body of the instrument, talk to the drum, 
find it hum. Study its vowels, she made her vow. To sound slowly, syllable by syllable, she pronounced words in Uzbek, word, unmoored word. Pure sound, O oh river, long had I been long seasons invaded by your current, devoured your tongue of water, those years time bent, my one voice spoke. Greetings. My name is Francisco Aragon. Thank you for joining us. One of the challenges of these last several months, at least for me, has been the lack of physical proximity between many of us. There's no substitute for a maskless smile, a face-to-face -face conversation, human touch. A former mentor once said that a poem is not a fully realized work of art until it's uttered aloud by someone other than its author. So I'm especially pleased to be sharing with you this evening a piece by another mentor, no longer with us. It speaks, I think, of a form of human connection that I look forward to returning to soon. The Hug by Tom Gunn. It was your birthday. We had drunk and dined half of the night with our old friend, who'd showed us in the end to a bed I reached in one drunk stride. Already I lay snug and drowsy with the wine dozed on one side. I dozed. I slept. My sleep broke on a hug suddenly from behind in which the full lengths of our bodies pressed your instep to my heel, my shoulder blades against your chest. It was not sex, but I could feel the whole strength of your body set or braced to mine, and locking me to you as if we were still twenty-two when our grand passion had not yet become familial. My quick sleep had deleted all of intervening time and place. I only knew the stay of your secure, firm, dry embrace. Thank you. I'm Jeffrey Davis. This is Wade in the Water by Tracy K. Smith for the Geechee Gullah Ring Shouters. One of the women greeted me. I love you, she said. She didn't know me, but I believed her. And a terrible new ache rolled over in my chest, like in a room where the drapes have been swept back. I love you, I love you as she continued down the hall past other strangers, each feeling pierced suddenly by pillars of heavy light. I love you throughout the performance and every hand clap, every stomp. I love you in every rusted iron chains someone was made to drag until love let them be unclasped and left empty in the center of the ring. I love you in the water where they pretended to wade, singing that old blood deep song that dragged us to those banks and cast us in. I love you, the angles of it, scraping at each throat, 
shouldering past the swirling dust motes and those beams of light, that whatever we now knew, we could let ourselves feel, knew to climb. Oh woods, oh dogs, oh tree, oh gun, oh girl run, oh miraculous many gones. Oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, is this love the trouble you promised? Dusting by Marilyn Nelson. Thank you for these tiny particles of ocean salt, pearl necklace viruses, winged protozoans, for the infinite, intricate shapes of submicroscopic living things. For algae spores and fungus spores bonded by vital mutual genetic cooperation spreading their inseparable lives from equator to pole. My hand, my arm, making sweeping circles Dust climbs the ladder of light. For this infernal, endless chore, for these eternal seeds of rain, thank you for dust. Hi, my name is Jesenia Montilla, and it is an honor to be here in community with all of you and reading you this beautiful poem by Alberto Rios called On Gathering Artist. And this poem comes with an epigraph. Who does the job well and very well? These artists, those curious lights. We are the cobblers of the song and barkers of the carnival word. We are tailors of the light and framers of the earth. We fish among the elements and hunt the elusive green and gray and blue. We drink forbidden waters and eat an invisible food. In this time of electronic mail and facsimile conversation, we send as our voice, the poem, the bridge, the circuit, the cure, whose electricity is made from dreams, whose song is sung in the colors yet unnamed drawn from the solitary etudes of the soul and given up in tender to the world. How easy to spend a day writing a poem. How hard to spend a life writing a thousand. A poem, a bridge, a story, a circuit, cures, laws, bowls, the warp and weave and waft of iron and paper and light and salt. We labor for a lifetime, but take every day off. Who knows what to make of us? We are not the rib cage, but the legs. We are not the steering wheel, but the headlamps. We gather happily, if not often. We can't sit still. We hurry off. Goodbye to us. Hello to us. A tip of the hat to us as we go about the drumming of our stars. 2020 has been the year of isolation um, for a lot of us. And I feel that poetry too is a solitary act. So reading this poem, it reminded me of how through the act of writing poems and reading poems, we sort of are in a way reaching out to one another and in that way, uh, we're never really, truly alone. I wish you all well. This poem is Perhaps the World Ends Here, or the Kitchen Table Poem. The world begins at a kitchen table, no matter what. We must eat to live. The gifts of earth are brought and prepared. So it has been since creation, and it will go on. 
We chase chickens or dogs away from it. Babies teeth at the corners. They scrape their knees under it. It is here that children are given instructions on what it means to be human. We make men at it. We make women. At this table, we gossip, recall enemies and the ghosts of lovers. Our dreams drink coffee with us as they put their arms around our children. They laugh with us at our poor falling down selves and as we put ourselves back together once again at the table. This table has been a house in the rain. An umbrella in the sun. Wars have begun and ended at this table. It is a place to hide in the shadow of terror. A place to celebrate the terrible victory. We have given birth on this table and have prepared our parents for burial here. At this table we sing with joy. With sorrow. We pray of suffering and remorse. We give thanks. Perhaps the world will end at the kitchen table, while we are laughing and crying. Eating of the last sweet bite.